All righty, uh, everybody, it is now one o'clock. Um, we appreciate you guys uh, joining us for another fun-filled marketing webinar. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about ActivePipe. Um, it's their email marketing platform. And we have the, uh, the honor and pleasure of having Nick Maggio, who is the head trainer for ActivePipe, uh, joining us today. Nick is going to take us through uh, kind of an overview because I know a lot of you, as we've had the shelter in place, you're discovering some of the the, the newer tools to you. Uh, even though we've had Active Pipe for a little while, um, it's newer to a lot of our agents. So we wanted to give an overview. But I wanted to start first, and you know, Priscilla had reminded me of this. Uh, we want to show you kind of where you can find your Active Pipe. So I'm going to go really quickly to Moxie, and if you go into your Moxie account. Um, if you go to the, let's uh, just show you real quick. Of course, it never, this is just what happened to Brian yesterday. It never shows you the right page that you want to show. There we go. It was just hiding on me. So if you go into your uh, Moxie account, and you come down here to, uh, there's a lot of different ways you can find it, but the easiest one that I think of is Agent Essentials. And then you go into Vendor Connections. If you scroll right down here, you'll see the little Active Pipe logo in here. And the cool thing about it is we have an integration with Active Pipe. So um, there is a single sign on here. So if I click on this, what it will do is you'll see a little thing at the top and also it will change and it will go over to the Active, Active Pipe um, account for you. Um, your, we're working on this right now. We used to have the connection point from Active Pipe to uh, Moxie um, in regards to your contacts that you'd want to send out. But what we found was that there was a lot of agents that wanted to use Active Pipe in a different way. And so what we're doing now is we're allowing uh, agents to be able to, do, to directly upload their special contacts list for Active Pipe only. So. Um, we're going to disconnect that that linking piece because it was just causing more headache than it was than it was helping. So we thought we'll keep this separate. It'll be easy to upload the contacts in there, but um, that's how you can kind of get in there. And uh, Nick's going to take us through and, and show you all that that good stuff. But what I want to just go over really quickly is is kind of like why did we go with Active Pipe? I actually happened to see Active Pipe. I was part of the the NAR uh, Reach program. Uh, that's their accelerator program. And I was in San Francisco, uh, this was a few years ago, and Active Pipe was one of the uh, companies within the NARA Reach program. And I happened to sit at a table with uh, their CEO, uh, with their uh, chief revenue officer, and a couple other people. And uh, they showed me this, and we were kind of just kicking off our EEP program at that time. And we were having some issues because we had everyone kind of lumped into one bucket and I wanted to be able to have the ability to create like templates that everybody could use, but have everyone have their own individual accounts, just like a MailChimp or a Constant Contact. But what was great about Active Pipe is that it's specifically made for the real estate industry. And where it differs a little bit is that it has a direct feed from the MLS into the platform so that you can leverage properties, uh, whether it's your own property, whether it's something that you're using for an open house, and you can create great looking emails uh, pretty much in a snap and be able to send those out. Nick will show you how easy it is to, to create these. It's all templated based. So if you've ever used one of those other platforms like Constant Contact or MailChimp, um, it's kind of a building block system. What we're doing over the next uh, couple of weeks is we're gonna be creating more templates for the agents to just utilize. So whether it's for a newsletter, whether it's for a new listing, whether it's for just information about you, uh, you know, what you do, your business, your services. Um, we're going to create a lot of templates so you can just kind of go in there and just pick a template and run with it. Um, or if you have a little bit more creativity, a little bit more design background, you can still create your own. But we want to just give the people that maybe don't want to think about it too much and just want to go uh, the ability to use a template and, and, you know, create something very easily on the fly um, and get some interaction. So why do we need an email marketing platform? Well, email is still a great tool to utilize to keep in contact with your, your base. I know a lot of us are using social media now. Um, a lot of us are using texting. A lot of us are still calling. 
But email marketing, if done correctly, um, is still a great platform for you to stay in contact with not only your existing and past clients, but more importantly, it gives you an opportunity to garner new clients. And so um, because these, these emails look so great, um, we think that you're going to get a lot better opportunity to have them be opened up by the clients on the other side. And so, um, you know, it's just still one of the foundational aspects to any marketing uh, uh, campaign is email marketing. And so we're just trying to provide this to you so you guys can send out as much as you want. But we're also going to be using it for the email engagement program, the EEP. Um, you know, the offices will be utilizing this. So if you're a part of the EEP, this is the platform that we're going to be using to be sending out, you know, those, the luxury magazine, to be sending out um, the market update, this market snapshot videos, um, all the stuff that regularly goes out from the EEP will be coming out from Active Pipe. So, so we're really excited. Uh, we think it's a great product. We love Active Pipe uh, just as a company. They're really easy to work with. They have made a lot of changes to the products based on our feedback. And uh, we're really appreciative of that because it helps our agents use it better. So I've talked enough um, with that. I'm going to hand it over to Nick. Um, and Nick will be taking us through the product and show us uh, how cool it is. So Nick, take it away. Awesome. Thanks, Derek. No problem. Uh, I'm going to present my screen now. And if you would just let me know when you can see. We got uh, the it. Dashboard here. It's up. awesome. Perfect. So, uh, so like Derek was saying, um, Active Pipe is an email mar marketing platform built specifically for the real estate industry uh, and really specifically for you as agents, because we know as a real estate agent, your, your day to day is very busy. You don't have, you know, maybe a lot of time to dedicate to your um, building out your content and trying to pull in all these different uh, you know, marketing pieces and, and adding in properties and things like that. So what we've done is we've, created this system that is really uh, user-friendly, really intuitive um, in terms of building out your content. So what I'm going to do here in a second is walk through how to build and, and send out an email in ActivePipe. Um, and you'll see that it, it's really easy to pull in all of your different content, pull in all your properties automatically, uh, and send out those, uh, those marketing campaigns. And, and, you know, we'll allow you to, you know, send out these pieces, you know, one at a time uh, that are scheduled individually. Uh, but we, what I'll also walk you through is how to automate that process. So really what, what I like to think of ActivePipe is it, it can be as simple as you want to make it, and it can be as advanced as you want to make it using different drip campaigns, uh, using different triggers to, to automatically send out those uh, emails to your contacts. So if you're looking at my screen here, this is the, uh, this is the dashboard that you'll see in your uh, ActivePipe account, which is like a uh, it's like your main screen, your home screen. This is where you'll uh, you'll see everything that's happening in your database. So we're going to show you, um, you know, who all you need to be reaching out to, who's making the most noise, what opportunities are are coming up to the surface. Uh, but I want to start over here uh, just by building out a, a really simple, uh, really simple email. So uh, just to walk you through this, um, you know, you're going to start with a template, which are kind of these pre-built, pre-branded. Uh, uh, email templates that you can use to style your emails off of. So you'll see that they're, they're not static templates. Um, they're more of like a wireframe or, you know, your base layer of content to start with. Um, so I'm just going to choose uh, one of these, you know, newsletter templates here uh, to start with. And let's say we want to build out, you know, again, something really basic, like a, like a latest listings email that you want to send out. Um, so the first thing that you'll see here is uh, the email editor. So this is where you're going to create your content. And, and notice again, you know, it's a really intuitive, really uh, user-friendly uh, uh, feature here in which to build your content. There's no HTML you have to worry about. There's no, you know, trying to add in different styles or fonts or color palettes. It's already set up and branded for you. So all you need, all you need to do is drag in these different panels over here on the right side of your screen. So these, these operate like your building blocks for your emails. So if you want to add something like a, like a header, you can just drag that over, add in a heading into your email. Maybe if you want to add like a banner image or a main image in your email, we can drag over this image panel. You can upload an image from your computer. You can also upload GIFs if you want to have, you know, some more interactive kind of content. Um, so there's, you know, different varieties of, 
adding in text, adding in images. Uh, and then we've got these property panels here that you can use to add properties into your email. So for example, if I want to add like a feature property, like a, like a main, your main listing in your email, um, it's really easy to just go into that panel, open up the property feed, select a property to add into the panel. And I've got all that information, all those images loading into that panel. And then you can add, you know, additional images below that. You've got access to all of the images coming through the feed for this particular listing. So you can showcase exactly what you want to display for this property. So here's an example of a feature property. Uh, but maybe down below that in our template, we've got this section called our, our you know, current listing. So now we want to add multiple properties. And what we can do here, instead of selecting a property manually, is we can use this little toggle button here in the toolbar. And when you turn that on, that will automatically start bringing in properties into your panel. So what we can do with this now is we can define which properties we want to display. So you can set you know, a, a filter based on a property type, listing type, listing status. You can also filter in properties that, you know, have upcoming open houses. Maybe you want to filter in properties that were listed in the last week. You can also restrict listings based on zip code or city or state. And you can choose to filter in only your active listings. So by default, listings are being pulled in from the brokerage, you can use this filter to filter in only your active listings. And the great thing about this panel is that whenever you've turned on this toggle button here uh, and you've set up that criteria, the properties in that panel will update automatically, which means, you know, you can build something like an open house email on Monday and schedule it to send out on Friday. And you won't have to worry about going back into the email and updating any of the properties here. It's all going to update based on the property feed, which updates approximately every two hours or so. So let's go ahead and, and save our email and a couple other features. I, I want to get through this a little bit quickly, but there's some other features in here, like adding in a video, either from YouTube or Vimeo, adding in a, a, an RSS feed. So you can add in different blog articles if you want, uh, but I'm going to finish up our email and save it. And you'll see that when I save this email, all we need to do now to send it is just click quick send and then you can actually send out the campaign. So this is where we can choose who we want to send this to and then when we want to schedule it. And you'll see that whenever we pick a date and time, we can also set a repeating schedule for this to send out maybe every week. So something like the latest listings or open house uh, or maybe a price change type of email you can send out every week. Maybe you want to send out something like a sold report, maybe every month, every quarter. So this is where you can set repeating campaigns. And again, the great thing about building out that this email with that property panel using that toggle is that you don't have to worry about trying to update the email every week it, it sends out because it's going to update with those new properties every time it sends. So it's a set it and forget it type of behavior for this, uh, for this campaign that we built really just a couple couple minutes here, walking through the template, the email, and then building this campaign. So really easy, really quick um, for scheduling a campaign. There's a lot more we can do outside of that with different triggers and drips, but I wanna keep it simple for this demo I'm going through and, and, and just walk you through the scheduling uh, of a campaign. Now, uh, what I wanna do now is jump over back to this, uh, this dashboard uh, because you know, walking through building an email, walking through building a campaign, again, really easy to use, um, you know, really simple tool, but where you're going to see the real benefit of ActivePipe, I think, is, is this reporting that you're going to get. And starting back with this dashboard, again, it's going to show you what's going on in your database, what opportunities are coming up to the service in terms of your high value contacts and then your popular properties. So high value contacts, this means we're showing you contacts that have the highest interaction rate with your emails, popular properties, these are properties that you've sent out in your emails that your contacts have clicked on the most. So let's say we wanna go in and view our highly interactive contacts. So here's a list of all of our contacts that have the highest interaction rate with our emails. 
And if we click on the contact, that takes us to their profile where we can get a ton of information just for this one contact. So we can see their info here in the top line. We can see their stats around interaction rate, open rate with our emails. We can view their most engaged property. And then we can see also a timeline of everything that they've been sent, everything that they've opened and clicked on. We can view a full list of their property interactions. And we can also view a map view of all the properties that they've clicked on within a certain area. So that's just some of the basics of the individual contact reporting that you're, you're gonna be able to see for contacts that have been sent and opened and clicked on uh, your emails. Hey, hey Nick, I got a, a good question for you. Uh, Linda Granger, um, who's on the uh, webinar, was asking in regards to the listings. Um, you know, you, you brought a listing into the email. Uh, her mm -hmm. question was, can you add a listing from other agents? For example, if I wanted to send out a deal of the week and it's not my listing. Um, you know, that listing feed is the everything that comes, uh, that is a listing from Intero. I just wonder if you could go back to that real quick and just so we can oh, yep. that. Yeah, no problem. So if you, if you click into it, um, what you'll notice is there is some things that you can do with it. You can find different listings based on, on office, uh, based on, you know, is it a new listing? Uh, there you go, there's the refinement. So Linda, to answer your question, yes, you, you can go after different listings for, you know, different purposes. So if you wanna send out a, uh, you know, based on region, um, if you wanna, you know, you're obviously up in the Tahoe area. So if someone wanted to highlight your properties and get some more exposure down here because, uh, you know, it's a second home or a vacation home, uh, then that uh, gives them an opportunity to not just reach out with what's down here, but um, maybe a second home email also. Sorry, Nick, I didn't mean to throw you off. I just wanted that, that I thought that was a good question because uh, we don't really talk about that enough. No, yeah, definitely, definitely a good question. Um, I, uh, Derek, I'm, I'm going to wrap up my side of things. I just okay. wanted to run through um, the email editor, the dashboard, the reporting, um, and really anything else that, that you want me to show, I, I can, I can run through that now. I didn't want to take up too much, uh, too much time. I don't know how much time you've, you've allotted for, uh, for no, no, I, I had, I had 20 minutes set aside for you. So, um, you're only 10 minutes. Soon, so if you want to, oh, gotcha. you want to dive gotcha. into a little bit more, um, be, feel free. Oh, definitely. So, so what's, uh, uh, what another great type of campaign I can show you is, um, you know, what I just walked through is a really simple inventory style email that you can schedule to send out every week, you know, automatically. And every week, you know, this property panel here with this toggle feature is going to automatically populate with those listings based on that criteria that you set. Um, now, another great type of email that you can build is something like a, like a just listed email that automatically sends out whenever you have a new listing. I think everyone can, can probably attest, you know, that's probably something that you're interested in. So what we can do is um, with this panel here, you know, let's say this is our you know, just listed property that we want to send out. So instead of manually selecting a property, we're going to turn this feed on again and we're going to define our properties and we're going to tell the system to first of all look for properties that were listed in the last day, so the last 24 hours. And we're also going to turn on the filter for your agent listing, so your active listing. So it's only going to pull in your active listings. It's only going to display when you have a new listing within the last 24 hours. So with this now set, again, I'm gonna save the email, click quick send, and instead of scheduling this to send out, obviously every week, we're going to set this up to send out every day. So this is, this is a way for us to trigger an email whenever you have a new listing, because the system is going to check, first of all, has there been uh, a new listing in the last 24 hours? That is your one of your active listings. And if there is, it's going to send out an email. So even though you've scheduled this campaign 
to send out every day. It's only going to send when you have a new listing. So once you set this up, it's going to run automatically. You don't have to go in and build an email every time you have a new listing. The system will check if there's, a new, if there's one of your new listings in the last 24 hours. If it's one of yours, it's gonna populate that property here in the panel and send it out. Now, maybe you only have, you know, one listing, you know, for you know the last week. So it'll only, it'll only send out one email for that week. Because when you see this example here, where it says no properties match your criteria for that day, for that next sending period, it's not going to send anything out. And we're obviously going to have a, a lighter level of listings right now, just with the search yeah. shelter in place um, in effect. So, you know, uh, I think what I love about this is that it doesn't bombard people um, unless you get a lot of listings, which I guess would be a good thing for, for most agents to, to have that many listings that would be going out every day. But for most agents, it's not going to be an everyday kind of thing, but at least checks the system and automatically when that listing comes into the, into the system, it automatically sends that out. Exactly. Yep. And, and really it, it acts about as close to a trigger as we can get. There's, there's not really a, new listing trigger. So this is how we can trigger an email within 24 hour intervals if you have a new, a new listing. So with, with that said, um, you know, definitely understanding the, the current market and, and kind of what we're going through uh, in this, in this period where there's, there's not a lot of new listings um, and you still want to keep in touch with your clients. So obviously we want to have some, um, some more interactive kind of content in there. So maybe you want to build out a newsletter. You want to maybe drop in some videos, some, some blog articles. So to walk you through uh, a couple other features here, first of all, you can use this video panel, drop that into your email, and you can actually upload a, uh, a video from either YouTube or Vimeo. Um, or, you know, we have a, a, another partnership with a company called Teradatum that does these market uh, statistic videos as well. So, I think everyone should by default have the Intero YouTube channel set up in their account, but you can go into your settings and actually add a different YouTube channel if you wanna pull from uh, you know, some, some different videos in. What you can also do is you can add in an individual video, just copy and paste the link up here. You can select any video off of YouTube. Once you paste in the link, just click get video and it'll add that video into the Email. So what'll happen is you'll have a, a preview image and then a play button. And whenever the contact clicks on that play button, they'll be taken to the YouTube page for that video and the video will play. And, and just so everybody knows, um, you know, we, we were the ones, uh, we actually uh, kind of told uh, Active Pipe about Teradatum uh, because we'd had a relationship with them. So those videos are already uh, in the system. Those are all our uh, videos that we uh, create um, already automatically through the system. So um, it's a great way for you to, to share those market snapshot videos again in a nice clean email that you can send out to your client base. Um, I got a couple of questions in here, Nick. Maybe we could just answer a couple of these while we're kind of going through this. Sure. Um, sure. One of the things that we want, and I'm not sure if this is fully up and running and maybe Priscilla can have some better insight. Uh, you know, we, there's been some questions in here about, you know, the contacts and everything. And, and earlier on, we were, the, the system had a direct connection to Moxie. And what we were just finding was that uh, there was some confusion about where to put the contacts. And it was really pulling your contacts out of Outlook into Moxie and then into Active Pipe. There was just too many steps along the way. Um, and, and some agents were getting a little frustrated because uh, they just wanted to upload a certain database specifically for active pipe use. And so we've uh, disconnected that. So I know there was a couple of questions in here about, you know, when they first signed up, that's where the contacts were coming and they were making sure that their contacts. Um, is our system set up right now to, to show where you can upload directly into active pipe? Um, if Nick has that ability, which likely he does on his end, he can show us that. Uh, for the most part, we, the majority of our agents are currently on the sync because that was the, the um, original plan. Original plan um, for the agents that are participants of the EEP. We are taking a look at their accounts and if it looks like they have not become an active high uh, user of active pipe yet, we are disabling um, the sync. 
And whenever we're questioned about contacts, we are actually now strongly recommending to disable the scene so that you can have the freedom and control to upload your contact lists directly right. to ActivePipe. But it's not, a, it's not a blanket. Right. And one of the questions in there real quick for Priscilla is, you know, if you are a, a participant in the EEP, you know, are the, are the contacts being taken over from our old provider into ActivePipe? And the, the answer is, is yes, yeah. they are being taken automatically. So usually your MIT is taking those out of the old system, uploading them into the new system, and then there should be a seamless transition and you shouldn't have any bothers in the world and it should just happen automatically. So. Exactly. The only uh, main difference now is that uh, those templates that originally are a part of EEP were exclusively only managed by office admin. Uh, now agents have the opportunity to use those exact same templates if they would like to extend their contact list and create uh, new lists and new groups that perhaps would like to use those same uh, emails. And there was just one more question, Nick, before you show the upload. Um, in regards to video, uh, uh, Sonia was asking about, like, could you share a video from KCM, from uh, Keeping Current Matters? You, you can share any video that is either in Vimeo or YouTube. Um, just make sure that it's, uh, you know, there's no copyright issues or anything like that. Keeping Current Matters is great because a lot of their content they freely share uh, with everyone. So um, I think they have a YouTube channel, if I'm not mistaken, and you can just take that link and drop it into the video section uh, of your email and then away it can go. So, sorry, Nick, I didn't mean to interrupt you on that one. Oh, no worries. Um, no, that's a good point. And I'll, and I'll also mention, um, we, we, you know, recently a lot of, a lot of our users are wanting to add, you know, a lot of different types of content um, that are more related to maybe like virtual walkthroughs or 3D showings of, of properties. Um, and, you know, some of them use different types of, video platforms that we don't really have an integration for. But what you can do is actually use one of these image panels and you can upload an image that is kind of like your preview image. And you can like, you know, overlay a, a play button on that if, if you want to. And you can link that image out to wherever that video is hosted. So if you have something like, uh, like a Matterport video, or if you have something that you've got maybe on like a share drive, like a, like a Google Drive or Dropbox, um, you can add in that link so that when contact clicks on, you know, the, the image, they're taken to wherever that video is hosted. So that would be maybe the workaround there. You know, we've gotten a lot of uh, uh, feedback around, um, you know, people at wanting to add different videos from, from other sources. And that would be the workaround to, to be able to do that. Um, alternatively, you can add, you know, a button panel in here and actually have a call to action where same idea, you, you've got your, uh, your button text where you say, you know, click here to view video or click here to see more. And then you just drop in that link and it'll link out to that uh, landing page where, you know, you've got that, that video hosted. Um, cool. So let me go back to contacts. Um, so, you know, we were working about working through contacts and we actually have some good news, Derek. Um, the next couple of weeks, we're going to be rolling out some changes to uh, contact management. Okay. And one pe And one piece of that is going to be uh, user management for uh, contact source, meaning that instead of going directly to our support team, every time somebody wants to turn off Moxie or turn on a, a different CRM, they can manage that. They'll be able to manage that now in their account. Um, so instead of bothering, you know, someone on your team or instead of having to direct them to our support team, they're going to be able to do that right in the app. Um, so that'll be some of the changes we're rolling out in the next couple of weeks, which is, uh, which is really exciting. Uh, cool, so as you can see here, um, I've got this contacts uh, overview page pulled up. So this is gonna tell you um, just an overview of, of your contacts in ActivePipe. So you're gonna see your total number of contacts, your subscribed contacts, contacts that have unsubscribed from your emails, and then this other section will show you either hard bounces or uh, invalid email addresses. And, and what you can do from here is you'll see a little green button on the right side. Um, if you are a Moxie user, you will actually not see that button. So again, you know, that's, that's something where if you want to be able to add contacts directly in an active pipe right now, you're going to have to go through our support team so that we can disable Moxie, disable the integration and allow you to add contacts.
So you can see you can either create a contact manually or you can import contacts. So that would be the CSV import method. And just to walk you through that, just a couple steps and we can import a list of contacts in a CSV file. So I'm gonna grab a CSV from my computer, grab some mock data here, and we'll start our import. And I know your team is probably gonna give you some best practices uh, around um, how to set up your CSV files. Um, I think we've, we've, I think we've shared out a, a templated version of a, of a CSV and, and what we recommend in terms of setting up that CSV. So you'll see whenever you import, we're gonna give you first of all, a sample of your column headers. So that's showing you what you've got set up as your fields in your CSV file. And it's going to allow you to map those to the existing fields in ActivePipe. So the most important part is, uh, and what we recommend is setting those up in your CSV file so that it automatically maps to those existing fields. So you can see here in my sample, I already have first name, last name, email, and those have automatically been mapped to the existing fields in ActivePipe. Now, if you got something like primary phone, we can map that to either phone number, mobile number. We can have custom fields. If you have something like type or group or company title, anything that uh, that doesn't exist, you can create as a custom field. So we can bring in those values for those contacts. So we've got our fields verified. We're gonna go to our last step, which will be to either import these contacts into your account, or you can choose to add these contacts to an audience. And an audience in ActivePipe is like, uh, it's like your, your groups or your distribution lists of contacts that you wanna send your campaigns to specifically. So maybe you know, your, your SOI or primary sphere or friends and family or past clients, open house leads. And let's say this is gonna be our primary sphere that we wanna import. So you can take these lists, import them one at a time, create your audiences. So we just need to finish importing and you would have your primary sphere audience created based on these contacts. Now, a couple of weeks down the road, maybe you've got 10, 15 different audiences. You'd be able to do the exact same thing to add contacts to an existing audience. So you would just go through that same process, start typing in the name here, and it'll give you a little drop down below. And you'd be able to select that existing audience that you want to add these contacts to. And really, I, I consider uh, the audiences kind of the most important part of your contact management because those, again, those are going to be your groups of contacts that you're going to send your campaigns to. So if we choose not to create an audience whenever you import and just import these contacts, then you know we have no way of organizing them. You're just going to be sending to all contacts and you're going to have sort of generic sends to these contacts that you've imported. So we definitely recommend um, either segmenting out your individual lists of contacts into separate CSV files to then import one at a time, create your audiences, and then you're good to go. So that's, that's some of the you know, best practices in terms of uh, contact management that you'll, you'll go through in, uh, in your account. Now, two things that I'll mention um, that will happen whenever you import or add contacts. The first thing is that we will match contacts based on the email address. So there will not be any duplicates again, based on the email. So that's that's the unique identifier um, in ActivePipe that says, okay, if you're importing a contact that already exists based on the email, we're simply going to update that contact record. We will not create a duplicate. The second thing that will happen is that we will run an email verification uh, service so that any email that you import goes, goes through verification if, or sorry, val validation, if it's deemed invalid, the, the contact is automatically unsubscribed. And that's going to prevent uh, contacts from bouncing. It's going to protect your sending domain's reputation um, so that 
you know, if our system says, oh, there's, you know, there's no inbox on the other end of this email address or it's, it's you know, it doesn't exist anymore, they're going to be unsubscribed and you can either update that contact with a different email address. Um, you can fix the email. Maybe it's just a typo. Um, so again, it's, it's all about protecting your domain's reputation, preventing spam, um, preventing any deliverability issues. Cool. Any, any questions on uh, contacts, Derek? No, I think uh, a lot of them were just, you know, we'll get the CSV. Sonia had asked if we could get the CSV template out to everybody. We'll, we'll email that out with uh, the video. Um, make sure everyone has that. I saw one, one good question, Derek um, and, and Nick. Uh, what if somebody else at, in Intero has the same contact email in their contact list and is sending things already? Um, are they flagged or will they get two, two emails, two separate emails? So the question is, what happens if somebody else has the exact same contact in their in database? Their, mm -hmm. uh, we, we don't match um, like duplicate contacts across different users. They're just, they're handled like completely like separately. Yeah. And unfortunately, if you have the same contact, um, you know, they're going to get two separate emails. Uh, you know, it's, it's probably not going to be the same exact email but uh, they could get that it's um, there's no kind of first right of refusal within the any email system uh, th there's no like lockdown if you know you're the first one in there and so that could happen in any system and, and active pipe is unfortunately no different than that um, oh i had another one yeah, that's a good point. And, and I'll, I'll actually reference back to our, our email that we built because uh, again, like, like we just walked through, you know, there's no preventing someone from getting like two emails from different agents at, you know, the same brokerage. However, what you can do uh, to prevent them from getting the exact same email is really be specific about your, your content that you're sending out. For example, you know, I, I know it's, it's, still something that isn't totally relevant right now as far as like just listed or, or latest listings, but maybe um, instead of just sending out the generic properties that were listed in the last seven days from a certain office or from the brokerage, you send out your active listings or come over here to the contact tab and say, okay, I want to display the latest listings, but only properties that this contact has interacted with in the last seven days. So we're, we're creating specific and relevant content for your contacts. So again, this is based on, on your emails that you've sent them, not emails that they've received from all the other agents. So you can tailor these uh, property specific emails to, to be really relevant. And so they're not so generic that they keep getting the same emails all the time and they look like duplicates. Um, so that would be one way to, to maybe avoid that. So I just wanted to kind of back up and, and walk through that. Uh, sorry, go ahead, Derek. Um, there was another question. Sunita had a question about, um, and Sunita, correct me if I'm wrong here, um, about integrating HTML into the, uh, into the email itself. If, if they're a little bit more advanced and they know kind of what they're doing from a coding standpoint, uh, can they actually look at the code and actually enter HTML into uh, an email? Yeah, that's that's a good question. Right right now, we don't expose HTML anywhere in in the app. Um, there there are some uh, product related items on our roadmap that we're looking into, uh, specifically, you know, being able to allow certain users to. Um, you know, build out the actual HTML um, and, and really customize the content. That's not something that will be, you know, available in, in the near future. It's, it's kind of, you know, six months to maybe a year off. Um, but it's definitely feedback we've gotten before. Uh, it's definitely on our, on our radar as far as like a, a, a product roadmap item. Um, but yeah, right now we don't, we don't have a way to uh, expose HTML to to any sort of user, whether that be admin or, or agent uh, related. Um, but yeah, I de definitely respect the question and, and it's something that we've uh, we've definitely looked into uh, as a company. 
Yeah, and, and like I said, you know, uh, ActivePipe is a great company to work with, and they have taken a lot of uh, suggestions that we've had and have implemented, but some of them, you know, they have a lot of clients uh, across the country uh, that they're working with, so they have to kind of take in consideration the the dev time that they put on things, but uh, definitely great uh, question, Sunita. Uh, Karen uh, Blackhead asked a question of where the MLS listings are being pulled from. Are you guys getting those? I, I can't remember if you guys are getting those directly from the MLS or if you guys are getting those from us via Moxie. I, I'm not even sure if you know, I, Mo Nick. I, I believe they're coming from Moxie. Okay. I thought it was yeah. because it's an aggregated uh, feed and then we're feeding that into the active pipe system. So Karen, yes. I, I think they're coming from Moxie. I'm almost 99% I'm positive that, that that's where they're coming from. So yeah, Derek, I believe that's true. It comes okay. from originally from Moxie. Okay. Uh, do you guys see any other questions in there? I'm, I've got two things. I'm doing chat and Q&A and I'm all over the place. So. There's a question from Mia about disabling Moxie contact and getting that green button to upload your own contact list. Yep, so, so right now, um, in order for that um, change to be made, you'll have to go through our support team so that they can disable the integration and activate the CSV import. Um, but like I mentioned, in the next couple of weeks, we're going to be making changes to our contact management. And that's one of the items that we're going to allow the users to turn on in their account. Um, so again, right now you'll have to go through support. They'll make the changes, update the account, um, and activate that add contacts button. Um, but yeah, in the next couple of weeks, and, and we'll be We'll be rolling that out and communicating to all our brands and all of, all of, all of our clients um, and in, in how to do that. Um, so yeah, in the future, you, you won't have to bug us. You'll, you'll be able to do that directly in, in your account. Um, another quick question, uh, Nick, and again, I'm not sure about this one either. Uh, I was talking with Linda Granger yesterday about this and she uses another, um, another system called Active Campaign of, of all names. Um, which is a CRM, basically. Uh, do you guys have any in integration with uh, with Zapier um, to do any kind of movement of data into the system from other systems, or can they do? A, have you ever had anyone do that? Because you know, if as long as there's a some kind of API on on one side or the other, you know, you can usually do that. But I'm not sure about ActivePipe. I, I believe we've reached out to Zapier. Um, in sort of the early talks of building an implementation. It's not something that we have right now. Okay. Um, but we have been in, in contact with them um, and among other CRMs, among other data partners um, that, that we're starting to reach out to. Um, and and we're, we're constantly iterating, constantly um, uh, looking for uh, partners to work with um, in terms of, you know, data aggregation, CRMs, um, video platforms. Um, and that's just one of the, one of the many that were kind of in early stages with, but you know, we haven't really built anything out, uh, just yet. Okay. And so for those of you that don't, don't know, Zapier is just a, it's a platform where you can connect two different, uh, kind of data sources and it can, you know, if something triggers, you know, if a new contact comes in, it would automatically go into your, your active pipe account and, you know, put them into a, in a database or something like that. So, so we're not talking over one's head. Um, but uh, I, I just wanted to also kind of formulate kind of what we're, we're talking in regards to active pipe. It is not what you would consider a, a, a true CRM. There's a lot of functionality in a, in a custom relationship management platform, but the functionality of, of setting up campaigns and sending out emails is usually a portion of a CRM. So uh, there's some questions in here, like, you know, could you use this as a CRM or, you know, is it function like a CRM? I would say it's more like a CRM light. You know, if, if that's all you're doing is you're wanting to stay in contact with a database on a pretty consistent basis, um, you could use it as a CRM light, but again, it doesn't have all the functionality. There's not like note sections in there where you can keep, you know, track of, of offline conversations and stuff like that. It's, it's really just email. Um, but, you know, for a lot of agents, that's all they're really going to use it for is just to set up those campaigns and send out uh, communication to their, to their database on a consistent basis. So 
Um, anything else, Mark? I, I, Sunita sent me an email. I'm going to try to go find it real quick. Uh, Hold on. There's so much going on. It's in two different places. We forgot to do the, the housekeeping thing in the I very know, I beginning. To tell everyone that. <laughs> Please just put it in the Q&A because it's hard to go back and forth. Oh, here, here's a question. Uh, this is from Leslie, Leslie Conti. Uh, do you have uh, like a concierge program where agents can just pay and you, you help them with their things? With like uploading databases? Yeah, well? yeah. For like a small, a small fee, do you do you have? Uh, at Active Pipe, something like like a concierge service where small fee, hey, we'll take care of it. We'll help you get started, get up and running, and uh, you know just just pay us to do that rather than them trying to spend time and figure it out. Uh, yeah, good question. We we don't have a what I would consider like a formal concierge service. Um, it, it's it's more of like an informal, you know, reaching out to our support team, asking for help. Um, and, you know, our support team helping you, you know, build a campaign that you're looking for or build a type of email or, you know, help, help you with your, your contacts. Contacts are, uh, contacts are a little sketchy just because, um, we, we try and stay away from, you know, mass uploading for, for agents. It's, it's kind of a li liability thing that we've sort of experienced over the last year with, um, dabbling in some of that. So, um. But with that said, if you need any help, reach out to our, our support team. You can email them. Uh, we have a really, uh, a really robust knowledge center um, that you can go visit and get, you know, documentation, quick start guides, videos. Um, our, our customer success team just built um, kind of a separate um, uh, website that does a, kind of a better job of walking through different phases of getting started in your active pipe account manage your managing your contacts goes through best practices so we have a lot of different resources that um you know we can make sure you have access to um, but you're always free to reach out to our support team with anything you need help on um and and you know they'll they'll, they'll do your best to they'll do our, our we'll do our best to make sure you get um uh, to a good place with you know whatever you need help with Hey, Nick, if you can uh, let me share real quick. Uh, Sunita brought back, I, I was totally off base of what she was trying to do here. Um, she actually sent me a screenshot of what's happening to her when she's taking the market snapshot videos into the system. Let me just show you guys real quick. So I think what's happening is there's a 404 error coming up with the, when she drops the market snapshot video into, um, and this might, might be something we have to take offline it might be a, an issue in the in the system uh, because one of the things I'm noticing right off the bat is that they're using the old uh, they're using the old marketing um, skins for the videos in here so I don't know what's going on there so um, we'll have to get to the bottom of, of that but uh, Sunita I'm, I'm assuming this is what you were talking about was the uh, the 404 error that you're getting uh, when you're trying to upload a market snapshot video in there so yeah, well, we had to take a look, a closer look at that because what we provided wasn't the actual um, video file. It's it's the um, the private window. So as okay. long as that um, location, the county or city or neighborhood is still available, then the link uh, is a permanent link. So you only need to be able to place it somewhere once, and it it gets updated monthly. Well, I think what she's also saying is you look at the top up there. It's, it's just kind of weird. It says uh, joebrown.agent.intero.com. So it's, I don't know why Joe Brown is, is in the system. So there's, there's obviously something uh, amiss here, Sunita. So we will uh, get to the bottom of this and, and figure out what's, uh, what's going on. So Yeah, I would definitely confirm that I'm using the permanent link, not somebody's website link. No, 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 no. This is... What, what she's doing is she's taking the Teradatum out of the system because the videos are, are available in there. And this is what she's getting. That's, mm -hmm. I think that's what she was, I think that's what's happening. So it looks like, it looks like it's being pointed to Joe Brown's market snapshot search webpage instead of. Or, right. She clicks on the video. That's, that's the problem. Yeah. So. Right. So well, we have the permanent links. Yeah. So yeah. we will get this figured out here. Um, Reach out to your office admin, and then they, they'll collaborate with us to make yeah. sure that we have all of those permanent links available to everyone. 
Well, cool. Well, um, is there any other questions that we did not uh, get to? I think. Uh... Um, yeah, I got a, a question, Nick. Have, are there any problems with uh, accounts being shut down, you know, sending out too many emails to too many people, you know, it, you're basically just sending out spam emails to as many agents or, or people as possible, like their bot list or things like that. Uh, how does your system handle that when, when something like that comes into play? Yeah, good question. So what, what, what we've done to prevent some of that um, potential spamming um, from you know, certain agents is that we've, first of all, implemented a, uh, a subdomain that you're sending from so that it's protecting the primary domain's reputation. If somebody gets blacklisted, it doesn't affect everybody else um, on, on the platform. So it's, it's our way of, you know, taking into consideration the, the potential for somebody using bot lists, you know, somebody spamming. Um, I don't believe we shut down anyone's accounts for that. Typically they'll just end up on a blacklist. Um, and we'll work with them in terms of, okay, why is this happening? What can we do to, to fix this? Um, what are, you know, some, some best practices around, you know, how, how you've been sending out your emails, who you're sending to, uh, things like that. But we've, we've already taken into consideration a lot of that uh, on the front end of building out your accounts where you, we're sitting from a subdomain. The emails um, themselves are always going to be fully responsive from different, uh, on different devices. So you don't have to worry about building this email that may end up in spam because you've either uploaded an image that's too big or you've added in some really funky looking fonts or text or anything like that. We, we've already uh, built a system that is going to allow you to have full deliverability. You won't ever end up in spam because you've built like a bad looking email um, just to, to simplify that. So to answer your question, we don't really shut down accounts. Typically they, they would just get blacklisted and wouldn't really affect everyone else. Um, you know, in the brokerage. Um, Karen asked another good question. Is there any limitation on the number of emails that uh, agents can send within a month? I never, ever, I've never answered that question. I don't know. Yeah, we get that, we get that question occasionally. There, there are no limits. Um, I, I hate saying that because, you know, <laughs> we want to, again, make sure we're not spamming people. We want to make sure we're sending relevant content using the platform to the best of our abilities. But technically, yeah, there, there's not really a limit on the number of emails that you can send in a month. So if you have a really large database and you've got your, you know, your contacts organized properly and you're sending out still to, you know, a couple thousand contacts a week or a month, you know, we're, we're not going to cap you um, at a certain point. You can, have more or less free reign there. But again, I, I caution you just to use, you know, your, your best judgment in making sure you're not. And I think that is, you know, we, we've, we've kind of emphasized this a couple of times is, you know, best practices. I used to work for an email marketing company and I, I've seen professional spammers. Um, and so, you know, they go from platform to platform to platform trying to just send as much stuff out because they think it's a volume game. I really discourage you um, from a real estate perspective to do that because it not only, uh, I don't know why, but people get very, very upset about their email. They're very protective of their email. And so when you are buying a list, which you shouldn't do, if you're just sending randomly to people that you don't really have a relationship with, um, you know, people get upset and they're going to be more likely to hit, you know, the spam button or the unsubscribe button. And all of those factors kind of tie into you getting a reputation uh, as, as a spammer. And so we, we really... Um, encourage you to do it the right way is even if your database is, is smaller, just build that, build a tight relationship with those people that you ha do have a, a, an intimate relationship with. They're going to be much more likely to open your emails because the content that's coming to them is from a known source and it's content that is relevant probably to what they're going through, whether they're buying or selling a home or, or whatnot, or just want more information about what's going on in the market. Um, and so, again, I think part of this is not only showing you this platform, but also talking to you and, and pleading with you to, to do the right thing. Because, you know, 
most people don't think about the can spam laws and, and the trouble that you can get in, but the violations are, you know, the, the, the monetary violations are pretty uh, steep and you can, uh, you know, they usually get you for not just the one email, but they get you for how many people you have in the database. So if you have a large, you know, five, 6,000 person database that you're sending spam to and you get caught, um, that can be a pretty hefty fine. So we, we really just want you guys to do the right thing. All righty, so uh, I'll get off my soapbox for a second, and uh, I want to I want to thank uh, Nick for joining us today, and um, you know, answering a lot of questions and and showing us a great walkthrough. Um, everybody that is on the call, just want you guys to be aware we we also have upped our platform. Uh, we not only have the regular uh, Active Pipe platform that you're showing that we showed today. But we also um, have uh, the upgraded platform called Auto, and we will be going through that probably at a later date, and we'll show you how you'll be able to um, do automated campaigns uh, within your uh, Active Pipe account, and be able to have auto-triggered uh, emails that will go out based on activity within the the platform itself. So, uh, look for that coming out uh, very very soon, and. Uh, Nick, you have any uh, closing comments? Anything uh, you want to say before you go? Uh, nope, I, uh, I'm all, I'm all talked out on my end. <laughs> but I, uh, <laughs> Nick is uh, a appreciate... bundle of energy, man. He just like <laughs> he's he's the constant. He just kind of goes for it. So uh, we thank you. No, I appreciate for, for joining us, man. Really no, I, I, yeah, I no, I appreciate you, you guys for having me on. Have have really enjoyed working with you um, over the last year or so, and and looking forward to really ramping this thing up and, and working with uh, all the agents. Awesome. And uh, if you guys have any other questions that we didn't get to, or you just have something that comes up as you're playing with the tool, please don't hesitate to send something out to uh, marketing at intero.com. All of these wonderful faces that are on here uh, get access to that email, and we will uh, try to answer your questions as uh, quickly as possible. This uh, recording has been, or this webinar has been recorded. Uh, Mark will do his magic on it over the next couple of days and we will get this back out. So if you want to reference it uh, a little bit later, uh, you'll be able to do that. It'll be up in the hub under yep. Intero Academy. There's a lot over there. If you haven't checked it out, it's every week. There's oh at God. least three or three to five videos every week. We have the slide uh, of uh, all the videos that we've done from the company since Shelter in Place has gone in and it's like 20 plus. So it's, there's a lot of content. So check it out. So with that, mm -hmm. We're going to do our Brady Bunch and we're all going to wave uh, goodbye and uh, hope you guys uh, stay safe and enjoy the rest of your Thursday. Thanks, screen everyone. Chat? Screenshot? No, oh, screenshot. Screenshot. Are you, are you oh, getting it? Taking... Someone? Is uh, someone okay. getting it? <laughs> I think I got it. Okay. okay. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Have a great Thursday.